And then finally, it went for the take profit for 2.5%, uh, $2,500 for the FTMO challenge. I spent the last seven months forward testing and back testing the 2022 ICT mentorship and its fair value gap. After watching more than 40 hours of Papa ICT and logging 180 trades, I think I find my model. So let's test it. So this is a recording I did while I was trading on September 8th. Um, I already put my order here. You can see the buy limit, the TP and stop loss. However, you'll see a little bit after that I didn't get triggered on trading view, but I got triggered on MetaTrader 4 for my FTMO challenge. So the reason why I, I took this trade is the liquidity got grabbed after taking out two days ago. You can go back in the um, on your own charts to check that. And then we saw a displacement of 1,400, leaving a fair value gap. So that's why I placed my trade here. And I'm simply going for the first level, which is the relative equal highs. Here you can see now I'm measuring the displacement to the downside because it was, it was significant. However, you can see that we failed to take out the 8.25 AM level. So I did not consider that we took significant liquidity before having the displacement. So even though there, there are two fair value gaps, a displacement of more than 600, since we didn't take those two uh, liquidity, the buy side liquidity, I didn't take this trade. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm showing that usually I take my fair value gap on the one minute, but you can see here that on the two minute and the three minutes, you can also see other fair value gaps. So if you think that the one minute is too fast or you think that uh, you're having problem with executions, you can go on the five minutes, four minutes and three minutes and things will be a little bit uh, slower here. So you can try that instead. But for me personally, I'm always trading on the one minute and using one minute fair value gaps. However, I need to say that ICT suggested that as soon as you see a displacement, you go first on the five minute, four, three, two, one minute, and then the first time frame that you see the fair value gap, you stop there. So in this case, if you really want to follow exactly what ICT said, you should be taking the trade now on the five minute. I wanted to show you that I got triggered on MetaTrader 4, but I didn't get triggered on TradingView. I didn't care about TradingView, it was more for the video, so that's why I pulled up MetaTrader 4 to show you uh, the execution. But this is something you need to be aware, aware of because TradingView and MetaTrader 4, since they're not using the same brokerage, you'll have uh, differences between the prices, between your stop loss, the take profit. So you need to take care of those things and need to be careful. One, one tip I could give you is to always look at the spread of your broker and then add this to the current price. Let's say you want to enter at 12,000 but then you see that the spread in your broker is one point. Well, then you can just add one point to the 12,000 and, and make your order at 12,001. So this is to make sure you never get uh, missed during your entries. Here, I don't know what happened with TradingView's uh, broker, but there was a big gap. I didn't understand why, but in MetaTrader 4, we didn't see this gap. So this is another example of the differences between the different brokers. Here you can see a reaction from the fair value gap to the downside. So it's always great to see and interesting to see ICT concepts always working like that. Again, sorry about the strange editing of this video. I know it's a little bit different from our backtesting videos, but I thought it would add something different to the channel. So if you want more live trading and executions like this one, just leave a like so I know you want to see more of that. Or you can just leave a comment telling me to just stick to backtesting. But those type of videos are taking me way more time editing than just backtesting and recording myself at the same time. But uh, yeah, just let me know. I need to be honest, when I saw my PNL go from 2000 to 1200, I quickly thought about closing uh, my order. But there's a difference between having a thought and also acting on those thoughts. 
when we're in profit, what happens a lot of time is we feel uncomfortable and we just want to bank the profits. But this isn't what you should do. You should just stick to your rules. And for the people who are just starting, I don't mind now because I'm a bit more experienced, but if you're just starting, you can hide your PNL or just show pips or points. So that's something you could uh, also implement. I knew some people would ask about the displacement uh, saw after taking the relative equal highs. So I me measured it and it was lower than 600. We did have a fair value gap here, but since it didn't have the 600 uh, displacement and also we didn't take out the low, it wasn't a trade anyway. And then finally it went for the take profit for 2.5%, uh, $2,500 for the FTMO challenge. But then I came back a little bit after to check uh, what happened, that's what I usually do. I always review yesterday's trades because I have them fresh in my mind, so it's easier to review. And then we can see here that it eventually went for 4.5%. However, you can see that after taking all of those highs, we had a big drop, which happened right before 12, which is the launch time. But I stopped trading after uh, 11. I just took my profit and then uh, left it at that. So that's why it's so important to not try to, to hold until the close of the day. Just take some profits and just 2% every week or even 1% every week goes a long way. And that's it for, the, for today. Hey, if you're still here, I appreciate you. So here's a little something for you. So this is the trade analytics section in my journal. So you can see here that I journal 222 trades from January 2022 to September 2022. 2022. And they're all done on US 100 and only trading fair value gaps. So you can see here that I got a win rate of 48% and a sum gain of 245,000. This is all in demo, of course, since I was gathering data, I was back testing. And I did not include any bias, any other thing. So what I would do is just come to the screen and then every time I would see a fair value gap, I would, I would just log the information. So of course, if you would have a bias or other things that ICT teaches, you would have a much higher win rate. But I want it to, to be as mechanical as possible. So you can see here all of those times are execution time. So you can see here that we'll first filter my trades by execution time then by displacement, and then in which time frame the trade was taken. So you can see here that just by taking only trades after 10 p.m., uh, 10 a.m., sorry, and I'll be in the future a bit more specific, specific because I'm only taking at trades after 9.55 a.m., but here in my journal, it's a little bit more general. Uh, you can see here that we got an increase of almost 7% in win rate, which is a lot. And we can see here that the gain only diminished by around 25%. So that's a great gain here that we got. So let's take this one, for example. Then we can filter by displacement. You, so you can see here all different displacement. And look what's interesting here is if you take displacement, which are only 600 and above, first you get a better win rate. You go from 54 to 57 but I still get a good gain because if I would only take displacement which are 700 and above you can see here the big difference in gain so a lot of people are asking me why do I take 600 this is the reason why a good win rate and a good gain still and let's filter down a little bit more so all of those are the different time frame which a fair value gap could be found so you can see here that, of course, on the five minutes, since it's a little bit higher time frame, you get a better win rate. So you go from 47 to 63 if you only take trades on the five minutes. However, you can see how the return got diminished. The reason why is you would see less trades on the five minutes compared to the one minute, which is logical because in the one minute we would see much more fair value gaps than on the five minutes. 
So that's the reason why I'm only taking trades on the one minute because I would still get a win rate of 60% with a very good uh, gain. Of course, all of those returns are based on a specific stop loss and a specific take profit. But I'll come to that in another video because depending if you take profit every time at 10R or if you take profit at 5R, the results will be different. So I'll come into that in a different videos. If you made it this far first, thank you. Please leave a like, it would really very much help my channel. And uh, also leave uh, a W in the comments so I know who watched until the end. Have a nice day.